Hi everybody, welcome to Practice with K-Ride. I wanted to take a minute and talk about doing a jam session successfully. Um, I did one last Saturday with people I've never played with, and my definition of a successful jam session is you get to know new people, you learn something, and I think you kind of know if they like you because they start giving you their business cards and saying, hey, if you ever want to work with me, call me. That happened with me with the drummer and the bass player. But I think I approached the jam differently than the other horn players that were in this jam. I think for them, number one, they had a problem reading the head. And that's a big deal. I mean, if you're scuffling and making mistakes on the head, um, I think that does color someone's opinion of you pretty quickly. We played that song, Minority, that last four bar, one of the sax players kept hitting the wrong note. And I even, after the jam session, went back to the recording and checked it out, and that is the correct note. And I was trying to explain to the other sax player, hey, this is all built on nines. You know, the whole, all, the whole thing, the phrases are starting on the nines of chords, and the nine of that chord was an F natural versus an F sharp. But he was saying something else. Anyway, my point is, is that uh, in my eyes, it, it dropped just because, not, not only because he made the mistake, but because he didn't understand what the mistake was about and try and correct it. Um, the second thing from the jam session that I think I did differently, we have a barking dog here right now, Leia, hang on. Anyway, the second thing I did differently was I didn't try to play the head with the other people. I played the head like I might be playing it in public. So what I mean by that is I wasn't, tr we were played blues for Alice and I don't, I don't have it memorized, but, uh. If I could read it, I could read it. But my point is, I really played it. I played it like I'd be playing it myself. And these guys were doing whatever. And if I had bent and tried to play it with them and make it sound like a horn section, I would have sounded lame the way I thought they were. And I wanted to play with my phrasing. So I did that. Um, the, the third thing I noticed as far as the jam session went was that I, listening to these other guys play, I could hear them trying to take their practice room, you know, uh, licks and scales and exercises and throw it on the chords. So even if they made the chord changes, like on Blues for Alice, it would sound like a... Uh, Anyway, you get the idea. So, not phrased, not a melodic line, not even a repeated sequence, which might make sense over the changes. So, I listened to that and I heard that really quickly. I thought, wow. And I, I see improvisers falling into that category of they're playing a song just to make the changes. And there's nothing wrong with making the changes. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that for me, it's always about how can I make a melodic statement or a rhythmic statement. There's either 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 something's melodically interesting or it's rhythmically interesting. So how do I do that? So like for blues for Alice, rather than make every single two five, I might go. <laughs> But that may make a melodic line out of it rather than rather than you know make every rather than play every single chord tone, make a melodic statement out of it using chord tones that make sense. Um, also, I thought I remember something Lenny Pickett one time said. He said he plays lots of bop tunes, but he just plays the blues scale and superimposes it over the changes and makes it work. 
So I did that one chorus and it was it was good because I can do that well. That's another thing I noticed. These other jazz guys, I think deliberately wouldn't play bluesy or pentatonic y or anything that would sound like a pop thing, which I think's a mistake. Um, I in my in my opinion, because I'm always listening to a solo thinking to myself, would I want to hear this? Somebody else playing it. You know, what as a listener, would I would I be interested in that? And I think, as, unless you're a hardcore jazz person, I think you have to have bridges or ties to pop music and blues music. And in fact, many many jazz people have said, you know, the blues is where it starts, and that needs to be a part of your music. That doesn't mean I play a blues scale over every change, but I do use that as one of my techniques. Um, I did notice also that. Time is such a big deal. Um, I don't think my time was locked in 100% accurate, but I still feel, in my own experience, I can tell how good somebody is as an improviser or even a musician by their time within four bars. So a couple of the other guys soloing, I'd sit there going, I'm just not interested if I can't feel where the beat is. Now that's not to say... You know, so good players can play ahead of the beat and behind the beat, but you have to know where the beat is. And I didn't get the sense that they locked in with the rhythm section once they were doing whatever I thought they were trying to do. Um, the last thing was, I think my tone on alto was stronger than their tones on tenor. Not better, but I guess, uh, how can I explain this? I If you heard me, you could tell that I was a good alto player, aside from me being an improviser and a, and a whatever situation I find myself in. From these guys, when I heard them, um, you couldn't tell if they played their horns well or not. I mean, you didn't get the sense that they could start pitches when they wanted to, they could play in tune, their time was set. So I, I always tell people that want to study with me, you can be the most incredible a musician possible and creative incredibly but if you can't if you play your horn at a sixth grade level that's what the listener is going to hear you might be an amazing improviser and you may make up stuff no one's ever heard before but if you can't basically play your instrument any better than say a junior high kid that's what the listener is going to hear they're going to hear something you can almost play in time almost play in tune almost have a good tone almost come in at the right time Anyway, these are things I noticed. Like I said, I didn't crush this jam session. I wasn't amazing. I wasn't incredible. And the other players that played had their moments. They actually did sound good at times. But I know in my head, I quickly, you know, not just come down if they're making pretty, what I consider kind of beginning mistakes as far as just playing the melody. And, and I, like I said, and this wasn't about phrasing, you know, about different different ideas on phrasing. It was about basic mistakes and like I said I went back to the original and listened to it on YouTube after the session just to make sure I wasn't wrong and then the second thing is to actually express yourself and play your instrument and not just run exercises and licks all over the place third thing is to tell a story you know start somewhere build and then come back down that's that's also easy to tell uh, less mature players come in with the fireworks right off the bat and they have nowhere to build. The better players, like, I, I always look at Brecker and Sanborn as my heroes. They start here and they come up and they come back down. Anyway, these are my uh, impressions from a jam session. Like I said, um, there's things I did well. There's things, you know, that I need to work on. But bottom line was the people there want to work with me. And that, to me, is a signal that I did the right thing. All right, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for coming to Practice with K-Ride.